In the past decade, fire has destroyed 8 million cubic meters of British Columbia's wood, about 13% of an average annual allowable cut. Insects and disease have caused over twice the losses during the same period. The spruce bark beetle causes more damage to mature spruce trees than any other insect. Immature beetles range from pale yellowish to medium brown. Mature adults are either all black or two-toned with the head and prothorax black and the wing covers reddish brown. Care must be taken when identifying the adult as a small spruce bark beetle is superficially similar to, but larger than, other bark beetles such as Ips and Dryocetes. The eggs, about the size of a pinhead, are pearly white, oblong, and about 0.75 to 1 millimeter long. The larva is stout, cylindrical, legless, wrinkled, and when fully grown, about 6 to 7 millimeters long. The head is pale to brown, with the body creamy white. The tail has two stripes. These stripes are not visible on other bark beetle larvae found in spruce. The pupa, while the same size as the larva, looks different, with evidence of wings, legs and antennae. When nearing maturity, its color turns from creamy white to pale tan. Spruce bark beetles are endemic throughout British Columbia spruce forests and occasionally multiply to epidemic proportions. The spruce bark beetle attacks mature Engelmann, white and Sitka spruce, but only rarely does it attack black spruce. Stands of 120 years and older are most susceptible to attack. When no down timber is available, the beetles usually start on the largest trees along streams or in draws and valleys at the base of slopes. Any standing spruce tree can be attacked. Devil's Club sites are prime targets. In the 1940s, 375 square kilometers of trees were attacked in northwestern British Columbia and the southwest Yukon. About 90% of the spruce was killed, resulting in losses estimated at 878,000 cubic meters. Concurrently, a large outbreak occurred in the Upper Nass River Valley. Again, in southeastern BC. Losses, 400,000 cubic meters. Prince George and Prince Rupert regions. Losses, 14.1 million cubic meters. Again, Prince George. Losses, 822,000 cubic meters. Nelson region. Losses, 1.9 million cubic meters. Caribou region. Losses, 1.1 million cubic meters. An epidemic which started in 1969 in the Kamloops region is still continuing. Research, started in the 1920s, was accelerated in 1964 in the neighbor forest near Prince George. The Canadian Forestry Service, in cooperation with the British Columbia Forest Service, set out to do basic biological research, which included describing the life cycle of the beetle, the host material, and its susceptibility to attack. Later, in 1972, research into management practices would provide information for the development of control measures and management guidelines. Work in the neighbor forest showed the beetle's preference for down material such as blowdown, slash, and fresh logs. Beetles only start attacking mature trees in serious proportions when population pressure in down timber becomes too great. The spruce bark beetle normally has a two-year life cycle. However, some populations or parts of populations may mature in one year or rarely in three years. This can depend on location, elevation, and mean temperature variation in spring and summer. Incidentally, a one-year cycle indicates a potential epidemic. The main beetle flight occurs from late May to mid-June. However, emergence can occur from the beginning of May to mid-July. 
Prime targets for attack are blowdown, new logs, stumps and shaded slash. Standing trees can be attacked when conditions are favorable. The spruce bark beetle concentrates its attack in the lower part of the bowl. The female begins by boring through the bark, then boring parallel to the grain, an average of 13 centimeters for the egg gallery. The male follows her in, mates with her, then assists by initially pushing boring dust out of the entrance. The female lays eggs in groups on alternate sides of the gallery. Parent beetles can overwinter in the gallery. However, they often emerge and attack a second tree. In two to four weeks, the eggs hatch and the larvae start moving across the grain, feeding on the phloem, first as individuals, then as a group, and lastly as individuals again. In the two-year cycle, the nearly mature larvae hibernate over winter then turn to pupae and on into adults by late summer. In down material, the young adults spend the winter in the pupal cells, feeding on the blue stained fungus, originally brought into the trees on the bodies of the parent beetles. In standing timber, young adults often emerge and re-enter the tree near the root collar to spend the winter in the thick bark, safe from woodpeckers and adverse climate. During the one-year cycle, beetles reach the adult stage in the first season and attack the following spring. In the three-year cycle, the progeny overwinter twice as larvae and once as adults. The spruce bark beetle can only overwinter successfully as a larva or as a young adult. It must experience a winter chill before it can reproduce. Like many other beetles, one of the conspicuous signs of an attack is boring dust, found in bark crevices and heavily scattered around the base of the infected tree. As the year passes, the boring dust becomes less noticeable due to the action of the wind and rain. Boring dust from spruce bark beetles is normally reddish brown and should not be confused with the boring dust from ambrosia beetles, which is finer and white. To be sure, the bark should be removed and identification made from the galleries. For instance, Ips and Dryocetes galleries are clean all the way through, while spruce bark beetle galleries are packed with boring dust. Sometimes pitch tubes are formed at the entrance holes. Boring dust mixed with the pitch causes the pitch tube to be darker in color. Such pitch tubes plus a lot of boring dust mean healthy, thriving beetles. Pitch tubes without boring dust go white when they harden and usually mean that beetles within these tubes have been repelled. Other attacks on the same tree may have been successful. Lack of pitch tubes does not mean that the tree is free from attack, especially if there is evidence of boring dust. Clear pitch is a result of sapsucker activity or cracks in the bark, so has no association with beetle attack. A lot of woodpecker activity means that a further check should be made for boring dust in galleries. Heaps of bark on the snow in winter or early spring could mean beetle infestation. Unlike mountain pine beetle attack, foliage color is not a good indicator of spruce bark beetle attack. While an attack tree may be a sickly green, a healthy looking green tree with many entrance holes is just as dead. Dead trees can be utilized if harvested quickly. Saw logs are okay for two years after attack and pulp logs can be used three or more years after the death of a tree. Harvesting a dead forest is a very hazardous operation, greatly increasing the danger to a logger and his equipment. Meanwhile, research goes on. Slash burning can reduce beetle population. An old concept of trap trees has been revived and is very effective in the early stages of infestation. Added use of pheromones and the creative application of systemic pesticides hold promise for future control. 
Sure, we can let the outbreaks die out naturally, but the cost is horrendous. Loss of production, greatly increased fire hazard, plus the aesthetic trauma of a dead forest. Prevention is the most viable aspect of control. We must apply intensive management to growing spruce forests. We must apply sanitation logging to our present operations. We must fully utilize beetle killed wood. The spruce bark beetle can be beaten 